That's right, boys and girls. An epic of final win! Ah! 2 1 win against Chelsea. Holy shit! At an empty Wembley Stadium, which is a really fucking weird thing. But it didn't matter because it's Chelsea versus Arsenal. There's always bitter hatred there. And what makes this worse is like <sighs> Chelsea scored first, which sucked. That shit sucked balls. But I'm gonna be honest, man. The back heel assist by Olivier Giroud, delicious. Absolutely delicious. And it kind of reminded me of the go ahead goal from Aaron Ramsey in extra time in the 2014 FA Cup. And so, how things have truly changed since then. And man, I could tell you right now, in that first half's first half, Arsenal looked okay. But they didn't look despondent after they conceded that first goal. And after the orange slice break, you have the Arsenal lads just pushing forward. And seemingly, Pepe gets a goal. But it's ruled offside. Completely fair, because Maitland-Niles before this pass was actually a whole body offside. So, you would think, okay, maybe Arsenal might get a chance here and there. The chance comes immediately afterwards, where... Aubameyang gets fouled in the box. VAR has to check to see where the footing was, but I still look way to put him fucking down right inside the box, which, easy decision for the referee. And it's Aubameyang versus Caballero, and it's just an easy fucking goal for Aubameyang. Caballero completely goes on the other side, and our captain equalizes this game in the 28th minute, and you would imagine... As an Arsenal fan, thinking the worst scenarios at times. Especially because it's the first half. There's still about, what, a full hour or more to go? And so when the score was equalized, I mean, I'm still at this point of, okay, cool, just keep it together. It's no big deal. It's just an equalizer. We just have to see this through. And this match is going to be a long, long fucking, you know, battle between these two clubs. And really, it became a physical battle between um, Olivier Giroud and David Luiz, where Luiz kind of need, you know, Olivier Giroud in the back. And I just had to think for myself, oh, no, I don't want, you know, Giroud to get hurt. But at the same time, you know, <laughs> Luiz takes one for their team. And it is what it is. And just the optics of these two guys who are with Giroud, a, a long-time Arsenal uh, player, and with David Luiz, a very long-time Chelsea player. Just a curious dynamic there. And Chelsea really looked broken after one of their key players went down with a non-contact hamstring pull. And that injury really, for Aspilicueta, was going to do numbers in this Chelsea back line where... I think after he was off, Arsenal looked pretty dangerous. Uh, had had a few good, clear chances, and despite all of that, I mean, Chelsea able to soak that shit up and get themselves into the second half. And unfortunately for them, in the second half, as soon as it starts, Christian Pulisic, on a breakaway, pulls his hamstring on a non-contact incident. And at that point, you're thinking, holy shit, their best offensive weapon is out. And yeah, I, you, you can say, oh, Ross Barkley, you know, most goals scored. or I don't, I don't know what the fucking stat guy was saying uh, regarding Barkley uh, with Chelsea. But if you lose Pulisic, that is a huge fucking loss, especially when you just start the first, you know, second half, only two minutes in. And man it, it just felt like a different game once you see Pulisic go off and I, I know Chelsea fans are going to give every excuse in the book and they will make every excuse in the book and, and, and fair play you, you can do that all day but this is what fucking finals are this is what fucking you know any goddamn football matches it's all about you know figuring shit out on the fly and going against uncertain situations and you know one of, one of these uncertain situations for, for Arsenal became just trying to maintain, you know, the common collect collectiveness in the back line 
when Chelsea kept pressing, kept attacking. And you get just these hints of PTSD from Arsenal's 2019-2020 defense. It, it, it just, uh, it's just really been a fucking trailer trash, you know, highlight reel or really low light reel. But Arsenal somehow managed to keep on through. And thankfully, it's Arsenal. That gets the go-ahead goal in the 67th minute. And this play starts from Hector Bellerin, who is just running through the midfield by himself. And before he gets dispossessed by Christensen, who goes down with Bellerin, the ball is rolled on to Pepe's feet. And Pepe able to get the ball passed right to Aubameyang, who's nice and open inside the box, finesses himself around, just kind of gumbies himself, and... And that's the goal right in front of Caballero. And, oh boy, it, it, the, the, the fucking elation that I felt when Aubameyang gets that goal is indescribable. It, it's just the best fucking feeling when your captain, you know, anchors the fucking weight and, you know, pulls your fucking team through. I know that's a weird analogy, but I'm not good with ships. <laughs> I'm not good with ships. But you can tell... Chelsea was a sinking ship right when you see Kovacic uh, get sent off for a second yellow card, which means automatic red card. And it's a really, really just lazy challenge on Granit Xhaka, who was also operating on a yellow card, and he could have easily been sent off early in the first half. But it's Kovacic who gets sent off in the 71st minute, and again... If the, Pulisic, uh, if the Pulisic thing wasn't bad enough, I think the Kovacic thing really put the nail in the coffin for Chelsea where you thought, okay, not great if you're looking for, you know, that pivot midfielder that can kind of just do it all and not having Conte in the lineup really messes that whole dynamic up too. But immediately following Kovacic's uh, dismissal, you got yellow card fucking parade everywhere. You know, one for Danny Ceballos, one for Mikel Arteta, and one for, uh, is it Anthony Rudiger? Rudiger. And you just begin to realize, like, wow, Mikel Arteta, uh, manager, but still getting a yellow card. That's some, that's some wally shit. But th this match just kept being real fucking close, despite Chelsea being down to 10 men. And... Really, it wasn't until, I, I really want to say, the final five minutes of regulation where Chelsea was trying to push for for something, for anything. I felt like the, I don't know, like the 10 minutes, you know, within the span of Kovacic, uh, you know, getting off the pitch and, and until like the 85th or 86th minute, Chelsea wasn't really going for it. It felt like, okay, cool, if we just draw this, we should be fine. Like, no, dude, you got to try to win it, don't you? Like, you're going you're gonna to pace yourself or something. But... Not able to do that. Arsenal just able to sustain. And thankfully, one incident didn't go uh, Chelsea's way. Is Emmy Martinez seemingly stepping out of the box for a handball. And yeah, you, you could probably tell there's going to be a lot of salty fans talking about that one. But VAR deems it you know, good and okay. And I don't know what to make of that one. To be honest, I, it looked, by all accounts, a handball, and he was kind of out of the box. But, again, VAR giveth, VAR taketh. This is kind of the way it works. But inside the final five minutes, you know, David Luiz goes down with an injury, and Socrates uh, comes on. Chelsea still looking real sloppy, but desperate to get anything in there. And when you have, you know, seven minutes of injury time, it's a long fucking time. And... Man, you just wonder, like, oh my god, 2-1. to one. You know, Chelsea's down 10 men. Can Arsenal actually pull this through? And when you see Emmy Martinez just you know, going down to the ground, saving fucking balls, catching crosses, you're just thinking, what a fucking warrior. Let's get this shit done. And when this warrior comes cross and paths with fucking Pedro, that man goes down. And, and, you know, I'm not trying to slay Pedro at all, but Pedro goes down and, you know, he, he's holding onto his shoulders and they actually have to, you know, bring a fucking uh, oxygen tank and a stretcher for him. 
And it doesn't look like just a broken shoulder. Maybe he shattered something. And this took a, quite a bit of time in an injury time, ironically. And Arsenal looked pretty decent, though, after Petros you know, got stretchered off. I mean, usually in those situations, I see Arsenal always panicking and just fucking up. But these motherfuckers pulled through. And Arsenal wins the FA Cup 2-1 against Chelsea in regulation to win their 14th FA Cup, most in competition history, and on a fucking banter year where they finished 8th place in the league. This is unbelievable. I couldn't fucking believe it. What's also unbelievable is when Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang broke the fucking cup <laughs> trying to bring it in with the crew. But our captain, our captain... Does his shit, gets the two goals, and god damn it, everyone in Arsenal today, you know, me being a cynical cunt Arsenal fan, I can shit talk Arsenal all day, but a win is a win is a win, and a cup is a cup is a cup, man. We got a fucking cup on a banter year! So I'm not complaining about that shit at all. And I'm gonna fucking enjoy this goddamn win, motherfuckers. And expand on this more on the podcast side, so make sure you tune into that tonight at 12 a.m., midnight in the Pacific Standard Town region. But I'm going to make a, a more longer version of this shit, but I, I am I'm too fucking excited. I'm too fucking happy on this shit. This is amazing, amazing stuff, what Arsenal has been able to do with the FA Cup. And so, <sighs> doesn't it feel good? Feels pretty fucking good. Feels pretty fucking good. So, boys and girls, that does it for me. Follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content. Come on, you gutters! Yeah! No, fuck off!